I just had to snap out of it. What if I can never sing again? I look back on my career at all the things that I achieved. Shania Twain! Shania, Shania Twain! Twain! Shania Twain! But in 2002, at the height of her success, she virtually disappeared. It was like a death. It was like something that I really believed I would never get back again, that that was it. It wasn't one crisis that made me lose my voice. It was my childhood poverty, my parents' death. I was a workaholic, and my marriage was falling apart. My own friend had an affair with my husband. Fred was my good friend's husband, the same friend who betrayed me with my husband. He was Marianne's husband. That's twisted. I'm Shelby, and welcome to Shelby Search Bar, a series on Deep Dive where I take you all on a journey through the world's largest database, the internet, and present stories to you that I find interesting. Today, we are taking a dive into the worldwide music phenomenon who redefined country music, and one of my favorite artists of all time, Shania Twain. Shania went from a small town Canadian girl to dominating the country scene in the 90s, selling a hundred million albums worldwide, making her the best selling female country artist. But in 2002, Shania disappeared when Lyme disease robbed her of her voice. Years later, her world came crumbling down again when her producer turned husband had an affair with her best friend. Shania thought after everything she had been through, she would never sing again. But after finding love in a beautifully twisted way as she describes, and through strength, she was able to find her voice again. So grab your floaties and let's dive into the wild world of Shania Twain. Before we dive into today's video, I want to take a moment to thank Babbel for sponsoring this episode of Deep Dive. As some of y'all may know, agora vivo em Portugal. Despite growing up hearing the Portuguese language my entire life, I never properly learned to speak it. So for the past year and a half, I have been working very hard to get to a conversational level, mas é muito difícil. Needless to say, I need a lot of practice, especially when it comes to all the grammatical rules. That's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. I use the Babbel app every day for 15 minutes and I take all of my lessons in Brazilian Portuguese, but there are so many languages to choose from. What I love the most is that Babbel teaches real-world conversations. The lessons prepare you to have practical conversations instead of filling your brain up with a bunch of vocabulary you may never use. What's even better is they offer live classes to actually apply and practice what you are learning. You will even get two free classes with your subscription. Plus, summer is the season for travel. Babbel is a must-have accessory so you can learn the basics of a new language wherever you are going. The lessons are simple, bite-sized, and with just 15 minutes a day, you will be on on your way to speaking a new language confidently. 500. 500. 600. So, click the link in the description box to get 60% off your subscription. And let me know down in the comments what language you would like to learn. Obrigado, Babel, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to diving into the world of Shania Twain. Shania Twain was born with the name Eileen Regina Edwards on August 28, 1965, to her mom Sharon and her biological father Clarence Edwards. Her parents divorced when she was just two years old, and that is when her mom Sharon moved Shania and her two sisters to Timmins, a small town located in Ontario, Canada. Clarence, Shania's biological father, he was not present in her life. He told the National Enquirer, and of course it was the National Enquirer, that Shania's mom was very possessive and he had to be home with the family all the time and he couldn't go out for a beer with friends so one day he decided to just up and leave his family. Soon after Shania's biological father was no longer in the picture, her mom Sharon would marry Jerry Twain who was 100% native from the nearby Matagami First Nation. Jerry would go on to adopt Shania and her two sisters, raising them as his own and even legally changing their last names from Edwards to Twain. At just the young age of three years old, it was obvious to Shania's mom Sharon that Shania was meant to be a star. Her first stage was as a tiny toddler on the countertops of restaurants performing for all the patrons. By the time Shania was eight years old, her father Jerry was teaching her to play guitar, and her mom was sneaking her out to bars late, late at night after they stopped serving alcohol so that Shania could perform country songs. The whole thing was a counter you first performed on. 
<laughs> uh, but kind of like that bar counter, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, I was three when I did that. Wow. And, uh, Good thing it didn't fall off. That was my first stage, you know, my first, my first little stage. So. Special guest, Eileen Crane. I am staying home. She did. She never did say so to daddy. Well, from the outside, Shania's family may have seemed like any other family. In reality, she was growing up in poverty and in an extremely abusive household. When she went to school as a kid, she had to lie as to why she didn't have a winter coat or even a lunch to eat. Some nights she wasn't sure if there was going to be dinner on the table. But the worst of all was regularly witnessing her father's physical violence towards her mother. Shania said even as a kid, she would try to intervene to help her mom. Basically, he would swear at you and... Right call your names and right you know really derogatory vulgarities yeah absolutely but he must have had huge anger issues he he just had issues and at the time i was looking at this man as somebody that was not being himself it was like he was two people but this is also the man who almost drowned your mother by forcing her head into a yes. toilet bowl yeah oh, yes Yes, it is. It's the same man. And I would I would get physically involved sometimes with my parents' fights because I just thought that he would kill her. One of these times, he's going to kill her. Shania said many times that she was born a fighter and a survivor. She was determined and worked as hard as possible to make her dream of becoming a professional singer a reality. When she was just a teenager, she would go to school, then afterwards work at McDonald's from 4 to 7 p.m., then after that would perform at a bar from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m., then wake up and do it all over again the next day. When you were a kid, were you performing at, at what age? How? Eight years old, I started performing in clubs. So eight years old on weekends. Wow. The school allowed me to miss so many days of the year of school so that I could pursue my career, and that's what I did. I went. In bars. No kidding. <laughs> On top of her already wildly busy schedule, Shania was ready to experiment outside of the country genre. And against her parents' wishes, she became part of two rock cover bands called Longshot and Flirt. She traveled all over Ontario singing 80s rock and roll. Even at this young of an age, performing was so important to Shania that she even missed her own high school graduation to perform a show. After high school, Shania was really ready to just dive head first into her music career. So she would split her time between Toronto where she would do singing lessons and write music. Then she would travel back up north to work for her parents forestry business where she would assist with reforestation leading the tree planting crew. However, while Shania was working hard on her music, she would receive a phone call from her sister that would change the trajectory of her life. On November 1st, 1987, when Shania was just 22 years old, she would lose both her father and her mother in a tragic car accident. I mean, you lose two people that close to you in your life your world is over your life is over you kind of feel like that I mean it's it was I certainly felt that my singing career was over and that was sort of my life my main responsibility was to my family I had to be there for them settled their affairs became the executrix of the estate and just took on a bunch of stuff that I hadn't knew nothing about Shania's dream of becoming a professional singer needed to be entirely halted as she had two brothers from her father's side that were still minors and a sister living at home. No one in the family could take them in and Shania was not going to let them be split up. So she moved back home to raise her siblings and started working as a performer at the Deerhurst Resort in order to pay the bills. During the time that I had my brothers, I didn't give up singing entirely. I worked at a resort I kind of did a nightclub type act for a couple of years. It, it paid the bills and educated me very much on a different side of entertaining. After five years of performing at the resort, Shania's siblings were all grown up and they started moving out. That is when she decided to really go for it. Shania was tired of singing cover songs when she had so many songs that she had written herself. A recording label was the logical next step. So Shania put together a demo tape and her manager set up a showcase with a bunch of Nashville record executives and the showcase worked. She ended up really catching the eye of Mercury Nashville Records and got her big break when she 
she signed a record deal with them in 1992. At the time, Shania only got just a little bit of cash from the record label, and she used that money to pack up her car and make the three-day drive all the way from Timmins, Canada to Nashville, Tennessee, where immediately she began working on her album. Her debut album, self-titled Shania Twain, was released on April 20th, 1993. My music ended up being kind of a blend of a lot of different things. So when I went to Nashville with my songs and my whole idea of how I saw my career, uh, they were much more in a very, in, in, in sort of a country mold of that time, of the 90s. What made you say that, I think, was pretty groundbreaking in a lot of ways. That was the moonlight, was the starlight in the What made you say that? so risque for country. The whole thing of it, like a guy on the beach and the whole, I mean, it wasn't something I don't think they had ever seen on, in their, in their world, you know, of country music. So it, it was groundbreaking even at that time. Unfortunately, the album did not perform very well. And despite being a songwriter, Shania is only credited on one song on the entire album, and it's under her name, Eileen. The whole reason she even wanted a record deal in the first place was so she could perform her own original songs. Shania even stated in her 2011 memoir that as a newly signed artist, she had very little creative control over the album. But all of that was about to change when a renowned rock producer came across Shania's music video for the song What Made You Say That? And he immediately knew that he wanted to work with her. That producer was named Robert John Lange, aka Mutt, Mutt had worked with massive stars such as Michael Bolton, Def Leppard, and ACDC. He really felt like he could elevate Shania's music, so he called her up. Well, he, he called me up and said, look, I, there's a quality in your voice that I really like. I remember that phone call very well. I said, he was just so wowed. And he said, you know, we really should get together and see what we can do as songwriters. Shania and Mutt would eventually meet in person at the Fanfare Music Convention in Nashville in June of 1993. After meeting, they would go on to travel together all through Europe while writing songs. It didn't take long for them to fall in love because by December of 1993, Shania and Mutt got married at the very place Shania got her start, the Deerhurst Resort. Together, Shania and Mutt became the dream team. They might not have known it at the time, but the music they were creating together would entirely redefine country music. So we would both tap into each other's styles of music for inspiration. So we really complement each other that way. I think that that's the way it is with any partnership. You're two separate entities until you come together and then when you come together you create something different than you would have on your own. We both influence each other very very much. Shania was going full on country pop crossover. This made the record executives over at Mercury very nervous as they felt it just wasn't country enough. But apparently, Mutt largely funded the album, which cost roughly $700,000 to produce, which allowed Shania to finally take back some control, really do it her way, and stick to her creative vision without wavering. The world was not prepared for Shania's album titled The Woman In Me, that dropped on February 7th, 1995, filled with iconic songs, such as Whose Bed Have Your Boots Been Under, I'm Out of Here, and Any Man Of Mine. Now, if you you guys are around my age, y'all know we grew up on these songs. This album didn't just go platinum, it went diamond, selling 20 million albums worldwide. What I wish I could have been was a fly in the wall of every office in Nashville when that record started to break. Because, like, they just didn't want to know. They hated the fact that he was an outsider. Absolutely. Yeah, he, he wasn't was pure, outsider. you know, it was, it was like said, there was paint in it. He's, this guy's bastardizing our music, and then within six months, they're all going, sign me an artist, it sounds like Shania. The Woman and Me, 10 million albums, that was a lot. For a female Canadian, wasn't even American. And that was an unprecedented amount of records for a female, for anyone, uh, with a rock producer. I, you know, it just, it really was a recipe for disaster. I could have failed so flat on my face after that. Like we have seen time and time again here on Deep Dive, no great success comes without some controversy. Shania was breaking the mold of country music, and Nashville was just not ready for specifically a woman in country to one, express her sexuality, and two, sing songs about men in the way Shania sang them. Like in the songs, Any Man of Mine, If You're Not In It For Love, and Whose Bed Have Your Boots Been Under. Shania's record label even told her they felt her image would create backlash, stating that she would be 
hated by men because she was too opinionated, too forceful, and demanding. They also said that she would be hated by women because she was too sensually expressive. Upon the release of Shania's music, she actually got reviews from critics that said she was Nashville's greatest exhibitionist. She's hot, but can she sing? Is Shania just a flash in the pan? Steve Earle, a country rock artist, even said, quote, she's America's best paid lap dancer in Nashville. Now, if you were around in the 90s, you you know Shania received an exorbitant amount of backlash for her midriff. Yes, Shania showing her belly button was hot gossip at the time. CMT even banned her earlier music video, What Made You Say That, over her exposing her belly, and it was called the most famous midriff in Nashville. In an interview, Shania said she was inspired by Janet Jackson and Madonna. She wasn't the first to show her midriff, and she didn't realize that Nashville was going to have such a problem with it. Broke a lot of rules in terms of the Nashville establishment. That's unheard of in country music. Well, first of all, my, my ideas were honest ideas. The way I saw myself, the way I saw my videos, my the image I saw, the, the way I saw the music and everything, it was it was just coming from an honest place. But as I started to make them a reality, then people would say, oh, I don't think they're gonna like that, or that's never gonna get on the radio, or that's never gonna get on TV. Um, well, then I started to realize, wow, I'm just, I'm just running into all these walls. It was quite frustrating. But I, so I didn't know going in there that oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like turn this industry upside down or anything like that. I, I didn't even realize that what I, that my vision was going to be so offensive or so unusual or so different. Shania made all of those critics eat their words as she was just getting started. If The Woman in Me redefined country music, her next album would revolutionize it. Come on over, Shania's 1997 album sold 40 million copies worldwide, doubling her previous sales. It was one of the best-selling albums of the entire 1990s and was recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the biggest selling studio album of all time by a solo female artist artist. I said, are you running back? In 1998, female artists have been dominating the charts like Madonna, Shania, Mariah, and Whitney. The album of the year is... And the Academy's top new female vocalist is... And the Academy of Country Music's Entertainer of the Year is... Best female country vocal performance. All right, and the female artist of the year is... The first ever double diamond award to a woman who just rewrote the record books with her two albums, The Woman and Me, and Come On Over. Ladies and gentlemen, Shania Twain. <laughs> Shania Twain. And the Grammy goes to Shania Twain. Man, I feel like a woman. And the winner is Shania Twain. Shania Twain. Thank you so much. I want to thank the Academy. Shania Twain. Women in me, Shania Twain. Wow, I wasn't expecting that at all. We accept this award in her behalf. Maybe I can take it to her and I can get to meet her. <laughs> Shania would embark on her first world tour to support the album. It was a massive tour, seen by over 2 million people that lasted from 1998 to the very end of 1999. After the tour concluded, Shania, she really needed a break. She had been working nonstop, really since she was a teenager. So she moved to Switzerland to decompress, have a baby, and really focus on being a mom. Around this time, Shania would meet Marie and Thibod, who she would hire as her assistant to help with daily tasks and help take care of Shania Shania's massive estate. Shania and Marie quickly became the best of friends and would even go on family vacations together along with their husbands. We will get more into Marie and the husbands later on in the story. About two years ago when your career seemed to be at its very peak, we now know that it wasn't at its very peak, it <laughs> yet to peak, but you in effect went into exile in a way. Did you think it was a risk? I did, but I was willing to take that risk. Um, First of all, I had already achieved way more in my career than I had ever anticipated. And I wasn't afraid of losing it because I never dreamt or clung to stardom. I never, it was never my goal in life. I write all my own music, I, I record all my own music. So, 
how can you rush that? I knew it was going to take however long it took before I was satisfied with, with what I had. And it, and it took longer because I had a baby in the interim. There were periods when I just wasn't feeling creative and I was just more into my whole the mummy thing. In 2002, Shania returned with her fourth album titled Up. The world wondered if Shania could actually come back and be just as successful after five years between albums. Well, Shania proved that she was still the queen of pop country music. Up was her third album to go diamond, making Shania the first ever woman with three diamond albums. Her superstardom and massive success really paved the way for women in country music. In 2003, a year following the album's release, Release, Shania would go on another massive world tour. This would actually end up being Shania's last album and tour for 15 years. In 2003, Shania got bit by a tick. She didn't know it at the time, but this was about to change her career and life in a massive way. The tick bite caused Shania to suffer from Lyme disease, and in about 15% of cases, Lyme disease can affect the central nervous system. Shania just so happened to be in this 15%. She developed dysphonia, which is an impairment of vocal production thought to be caused by central nervous disorders. Shania completely lost her ability to sing. The voice loved by millions was robbed by a teeny tiny little tick. I was so trapped in this dysfunctional voice. The loss of my voice, oh my God, this was like, it was like losing, it was like a death. It was like something that I really believed I would never get back again, that that was it. And I had to face it, and I spent those years coming to terms with it, that I would never sing with any satisfaction. There was acceptance. Yes, I had to. There were no solutions. I dug as far as I, I could dig, and uh, there were no, no answers. Desperate to seek answers, she visited so many specialists. She was just trying to figure out what happened to her voice. But Shania got absolutely no answers for years. She was even told that what she was experiencing was basically mental and all in her head. Shania quietly disappeared from the public eye and the world wondered why. Meanwhile, Shania was silently going through one of the worst depressions of her life. She even tried to fight the loss of her voice in 2007 when she began working on another album that was set to come out in 2008. Remember all that backlash Shania received? Well, this album was supposed to address all of that. Shania said the songs she was working on were about the insecurity that was highlighted during the intense criticism she received in the late 90s. But this album never saw the light of day for multiple reasons. Aside from Shania at this point, still not knowing why she was struggling to sing. In 2008, when her album was slated to come out, her world would unexpectedly and seemingly out of nowhere come crashing down. Shania knew her husband of 14 years mutt had been acting strange. She certainly didn't think that her marriage was on the verge of ending. Until one day, very unexpectedly, mutt approached Shania asking for a divorce. Shania was devastated, but most of all, confused. She didn't understand why, and Mutt wasn't providing her with any real honest answers. The very next day, she would get a call from Frederick, the husband of Shania's assistant turned best friend, Marianne, and this call would absolutely shatter Shania. Earlier in the video, we discussed how in the late 90s, Shania and Marianne developed a friendship, and 11 years later, that friendship was still going strong. Well, so Shania thought. Right after finding out her husband was leaving her, Shania learned that her best friend betrayed her. See, Fred had discovered that his wife Marie Ann was having an affair with Shania's husband, Mutt. Fred found evidence in the form of hotel receipts, phone bills, and a lingerie set that was in Marie Ann's suitcase. Fred would immediately confront both his wife and Mutt. He told them that they need to tell Shania, that they at least owe her that much. Well, they both refused to be honest, so Fred had to be the one to tell Shania the real reason her marriage was ending. Shania didn't want to believe that this could possibly be true. She had just spent time with Marianne while their children played on the floor together. Marianne was still her secretary and in charge of her home. Shania had even confided in Marianne about the struggles in her marriage to Mutt. Shania called Marianne up on the phone wanting to give her the opportunity to come clean, but Marianne completely lied to Shania and denied the affair. Immediately after that phone call, Marianne changed her number so Shania could no longer contact her. You're wrong. I'm telling you, you're wrong. She's not having an affair with Mutt. She gave them 
the benefit of the doubt immediately. And when I asked her the direct question, when I said, what is going on? Then she got very defensive and said, how could you think such a thing that I would ever lie to about anything? It's the whole innocent friend, even with a tear in her eye. She questioned both of them again, and she found out the truth. And like I said, there, there was just no doubt about it, you know? All Marianne did through the whole thing was comfort me, telling me that everything's fine. And I believed her and I accepted it as being genuine. She's a great actress. She deserves an Academy Award. Um, I really believed her that she was being sincere and genuine and a good friend. In Shania's memoir, she wrote that at the time, she was ready to die. She also stated, quote, I was disgusted that another woman's lust for a lifestyle upgrade was worth the devastation of my family. Shania even shared a letter in her memoir that she wrote to Marianne. Please, I'm begging you. I am so low, so brokenhearted. I can't take it anymore. I wish you love and happiness, but I am dying and I can't take it anymore. I loved him so much and I can't cope anymore. I don't want life or love anymore. I just want peace. Why are you torturing me? Let it go, please. If you could see me crying and suffering, maybe you would have pity. Find love somewhere else from someone else that isn't hurting two families so much. All of us have to suffer for the two of you. Suffering does not discriminate. Yeah. No but one is above it's, this type of low. Yeah, it's so interesting, and it's interesting, that's a low point in your life when you're begging the other woman for your husband yes. back. Shania said the grief of her husband's betrayal felt similarly to when she had lost her parents. She didn't think that she was ever going to be able to move on from this. The only other person in the world who could possibly understand what Shania was going through was Fred, because he was going through the same experience exact thing. They became friends and started to really confide in each other. In the process of healing together, Shania and Fred fell in love. But Shania didn't want love. She was done with love. She tried her absolute hardest to reject the feelings that she was having. Fred was safe. So it was a really beautiful and perfect friendship. He was Marianne's husband. That's twisted. <laughs> really think about it but just so beautifully twisted i really can't complain i've got a beautiful man i have everything i could ever want in life she's really a true angel that's what i think <laughs> <laughs> By December of 2010, Shania and Fred were engaged. And just one month later, on New Year's Day 2011, they had a secret, beautiful, intimate wedding in Puerto Rico. After finding love again, Shania began to find her voice too. She finally found a surgeon who didn't tell her the loss of her voice was just all in her head. And he was even willing to do throat surgery to help restore Shania's voice. Now, the surgery was a little risky as it could have caused even more damage to her voice. But by this point, Shania was willing to try Try anything so she could sing again. Also, the surgery could never fully fix the problem as Shania's nerves had some permanent damage. It's an open throat surgery and they just put these braces in there. You have to sing while they're doing it and then they close you up and you're, you know, in agony for a few weeks and you can't speak. And then that moment when you test it out. I'm telling you, that was... Emotional. Euphoria. I'm like, oh my God, I have a resonance that I haven't had in years. The surgery worked, and with voice therapy, Shania was able to regain a lot more control over her singing. She was ready for the next step. Nothing was going to stop Shania from getting back out on that stage so she could connect with her fans again. In June of 2011, Shania announced that she will be embarking on a two-year-long Vegas residency at Caesars Palace called Shania Still the One. Shania hadn't been on stage since 2004, so of course she was nervous. She was afraid that her voice might give out while performing, but she was ready to face that fear head on. Well, Shania ended up proving to everybody that she was still very much the one, as her residency was a box office hit, grossing over $40 million. After the residency ended, Shania was ready to face another fear head on. She began developing a new album. It would be her first album in not only 15 years, but her first album since her divorce. Shania said getting back in the studio and writing music without Mutt was 
was a way for her to gain her independence and really learn about herself all over again. On September 29th, 2017, Shania released her comeback album titled Now. Shania said the album isn't about divorce, it's about survival, surviving everything that she had been through since the day she was born. In those 15 years, I mean, you, you were pretty forthright about dealing with all the uh, both medical issues and mm -hmm. personal issues. Are we able to, um, uh, are, it, through the songs, are we uh, coming to terms with that, hearing that in the music, or how much, how therapeutic was that for you? The whole process of writing the album was very cathartic and very much, it was a self therapy experience. You know, I've been through a really long transition, you know, and during the transition, eventually saw the light at the end of the tunnel, and now I'm at, I'm at, there. Fast forward to present day, Janai and Fred celebrated their 12th wedding anniversary and are very much still happily married. This year, Shania released another album titled The Queen of Me. And quite literally just this week, Shania announced that she is returning to the Vegas stage at the Planet Hollywood Resort in 2024 for her Come On Over Vegas residency. For an entire encapsulated moment in time, the entire world was looking at Shania. And while she may have experienced so much heartache right in the public eye, she persevered and she found her voice. Come On Over completely eclipsed anything she or any other country artist for that matter has done for the past two decades. 25 years later, Shania Twain boasts one of the largest and most dedicated fan bases around the world and has solidified herself in the pop history books as one of the greatest country music icons the human race has ever produced.